Good morning and welcome to Scottsdale Christian Church. Please stand and worship our Lord with us. All creation grows for a world of darkness. Flows a light to stone. Light is breaking in a stable for a throne. This is amazing, amazing. 
follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Lord, um, we just ask that you'd would help us light up the world with your love. And the message of your death, um, your birth um, on Christmas, but also your death that gave us eternal life, Lord, that we would not walk out of here without that today. Thank you so much for your power and your grace that gives us eternal life. In Jesus' name. Amen. We want to welcome you here as we're going to sing some Christmas at this beautiful time of the season. Uh, if you are new with us, uh, what a delight, what a joy it is to have you with us. And also to those that are watching on the internet right now, we want to welcome you all to Scottsdale Christian Church. Yeah.
shining in the east, we on them fall, and to the earth it gave great light, and so it continued for day and night. No. the light and life and all you bring and for that we give you the glory today we honor you we worship you we read about you we lift up Tom with this message of hope and light and may we take that out into the world God it's in your precious name we pray in Jesus name amen please be seated I forgot to turn the microphone on. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> How is everybody? Are you uncomfortable because there's tables and not chairs today? Well, it's the women's fault. 
they had their uh, Christmas thing yesterday. They had like 50 women here. I think that's a great turnout for us. And then this Wednesday, we've got our Christmas party, so I thought, why take them up, put them down, take them up, and put them down? So you have table, <laughs> says the guy that usually has to do it. <laughs> well, this morning, we're going to be talking a little bit more about Christmas and the Christmas season. We've been studying what it is to be the light of the world and what the light of the world is. And this morning, I want us to continue that. Last week, we looked at God sending the light and who the light was and how that light affects us. So God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, have eternal light. So this week, we're going to look a little, a little further into that, and we're going to look at what it means to receive that light and what we're supposed to do with that and how we're supposed to do it. So I'm going to start off by asking you a question. What does it mean to shine? What is shine? Well, shine is a verb, so it's an action. It means to give off or reflect light. That's what it means to shine. Well, let's put it in a little bit more of a Christian concept. Shine means to share the light, the light being Jesus, and to reflect the light, Jesus, in our lives and to spread it to those around us, always, in everything we do. That's what it means to shine as a Christian. That's what Christian shine looks like. Paul puts it in, a, in an interesting way in Philippians 2, verses 14 through 16. Do all things without grumbling. <laughs> or disputing. <laughs> that you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God without blemish in the midst of the, a crooked and twisted generation. Among, 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 among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ. I may be proud that I did, did not run in vain or labor in vain. The last part we like <laughs> is that first part that kind of gets to us. Because that's so easy. Do things without grumbling or disputing. Well, I'll admit that it's not always easy. It's not easy for me either. But all things that are good are not always easy. We think about... When we are exercising, that first day that we exercise, how easy is that? Or what about the day after that day that we exercise? <laughs> how does that feel? Maybe a little sore. But if we keep at it, it gets easier, and it gets easier every day. Being and sharing the light is the same way. We may be a little uncomfortable with it at first. It may be a little hard at first. But if we keep doing it, it starts to become part of our life. It starts to become natural. It starts to be something that we look forward to doing because we know the rewards that we have from it. And doing that, we have to remember why we shine. John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Those are Jesus' words. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have light of life. That's what we want to do. That's who we are called to be. That light that is Jesus, that he puts in us, what are we supposed to do with that? How are we supposed to respond to that light? Well, this morning I want to share with you a story from the Old Testament. It's about a man that had an encounter with God. He had an encounter with the light. And I want to share some of that, his story. You may even know his name, and you may have heard of him before. His name is Moses. Moses had led the Israelites out of bondage in Egypt, and God had di directed and led him to do so. At the point of the story that we're going to be looking at this morning, God calls him up onto the mountain. 
so that he could give him some additional instructions to give to the Israelites. He spent 40 days on the mountain with the Lord, with God. And the story picks up when he comes back down from the mountain to the Israelites. And this is what happens next. It's uh, Exodus 34, verses 29 through 35. It's on page 63 of your Bible. It's right close to the front. In my Bible, it's got a big thing across the top that says, Radiant Face of Moses. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses came to them, they called to them, so Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them the commands that the Lord had given him on the mountain. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had, what he had been commanded, they saw his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord again. His face was radiant. There's a lot in this little part of this story that I want us to understand about what it is to be in the light and how that light affects us. First, the people saw a difference in Moses after he'd spent 40 days on the mountain. They saw a physical difference. His face was radiant. He shined. We were like Moses. When we spend time with, with the Lord and with Jesus, when we walk in his light, we too receive his light. People can see a difference in us too when we spend time with the Lord. When we spend time in his presence, when we go stand on the mountain with him. I think of times when we've done outreaches here at the church. When we go like to feed my starving children. After we're finished, how everybody's smiling and talking and happy. Or when we've done other outreaches where we've helped people. And at the end of that, people don't want it to end. And everybody's talking about how good it feels and how much fun it was. And everybody's just talking in mile a minute. You see a difference in their faces. You see the glow when we spend time serving and being in the presence of the Lord. There's a physical change. There's also a physical change in those that we're helping. And you can see that also. You can see it on their faces when you help them. You can see the glow. Now, it's not about that personal feeling. It's that feeling we get because we're doing what Jesus asked us to do, what we're designed to do. That's why it's so rewarding. That's why it makes such a difference. It's that glow. It's the light of Jesus that shines through us. Jesus describes that effect in Matthew 5. You are the light of the world. A town built, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put, light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and, give, and it gives light to everyone in the house. He goes on in verse 16. He says, let your light shine in front of men. Then you will see the good things, then they will see the good things you do and will honor your Father who is in heaven. When you walk in the light, you become the light. Jesus lit that light in us. He doesn't want us to hide it. When you truly are walking in his light, you can hide it. It's too powerful. It's too bright. We are called to be his light, to be his hands and feet, to be God with skin on to our families, to our friends, to our neighbors, to the stranger on the street. We are called to be the light and to shine the light. The other thing I want us to take out of this, this story about Moses is 
Let's look back at verse 30. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. Why were they afraid to come near him? Because there was something different about him. When there's something different about us, people are a little eerie. What's going on? Why is that person being nice to me? <laughs> Why is that person smiling all the time? Same thing with Moses. They knew there was something different. And it's not technically that they were probably afraid. They just didn't know what it was. They didn't understand it. So naturally, they were, took a step back. When we do that, people notice it too. When they look at us and see Jesus, they may step back too. They may be a little afraid or a little uneasy with you. It's not because you're scary looking. Well, <laughs> we won't say that for everybody in the room. <laughs> but that's not the reason. <laughs> They question it. They want to know what it's all about. They want to know why you're shining and they're not. Why you're walking in the light and they still feel it's so dark around them. We want them to question that. We want them to see that. We want them to see that difference in us. They want, we want them to see us radiant from being in the presence of the Lord. Like Moses, when we experience God, when we spend time in his presence, in the presence with Jesus, we too become radiant and we shine. When we do that, we change. And people can see those changes in us because we shine. Jesus called us to be the light. He made us the light. And we are to shine that light. I've seen recently here in this church, People shining when things happen, when they spend the presence of the Lord. This week, I had the honor of baptizing a couple of people. They were a little shy and didn't want to do it in front of everybody, so I won't make a big deal about it. <laughs> <laughs> the two that's glowing in the back, that's them. <laughs> When they came in Friday morning, they were smiling. You could see they were anticipating something. Now, the water was really, really cold. <laughs> I'd had ice in it for at least a day. <laughs> but when they come up out of that water and when they left this building, you could not take the smile off their face. They were radiant. I saw the light in their faces because they spent time with the Lord in a very special way. Now, here's the deal. Once we receive the light, like Samantha and Danny did Friday, it doesn't stop there. We have to feed it. We have to trim the wick. We have to add oil. And sometimes we have to replace that bulb with a much brighter bulb. Because we have to continue to spend time with God or our light will go out. It'll get dimmer. It's easy for us once we receive the gift to sit back and just let the oil run out of our lamp. Just to hide the light that Jesus lit in us. But we have to remember what Jesus told us. We're not to hide that light. He lights that light in us, and we have to share it with those around us every day, everywhere we go. And if we want to keep oil in our lamp, we have to keep refueling it by studying his word, being in prayer with him, letting the Holy Spirit lead us in different things. And sometimes we have to step out of our comfort zone. How are we supposed to respond to the light? God uses us. 
He uses us to light the world. He uses us because he can, if we're willing. This week on Facebook, I saw a story. Yes, I saw it for Facebook, and I'm going to use it on, in church. <laughs> and it's not one of those bad examples either <laughs> that I've used before. Now, this week I was reading through my Facebook page, and there was a story popped up on my timeline. Now, I don't know who the author was. It was uh, just one of those things that somebody had written about their own personal experience. And it was a neat story, and so people started liking it and sharing it. So I don't even know where it originated. But the, the story fits right into what we're talking about this morning. It fits right into what this whole sermon series is all about. So I want to share that story with you this morning. It starts off, I was in, in Dollar Tree last night, and there was a lady and two kids behind me in a long line. One was a big kid, and the other was just a toddler. The bigger one had a pack of glow sticks, and the toddler was screaming for them. The mom opened the pack and gave him one of the, one of the glow sticks, and his tears stopped. He walked around with a smile on his face, but then the bigger boy took it away from the toddler. The toddler started screaming, and just as the mom was about to fuss, the older child bit the glow stick and handed it back to the toddler. As we walked outside at the same time, the toddler noticed that the stick was now glowing, and his brother said, I had to break it so that you could get the full effect from it. So I want to break for the story here just a second. Tara, show us that picture of glow sticks. On your table, in case you don't know what a glow stick is, you need to know what a glow stick is. There's an envelope that says, do not open. Don't open it. No, me. <laughs> open it up. There's some glow sticks in there. Don't break it yet if you know how to, what these are all about. Pass them around. Make sure everybody gets one. You people in the booth, there's an envelope right above Elaine's head that's got some for you guys, too. You didn't get left out. Everybody got one? Don't break them yet. I'm going to go back to the story for a minute. Remember, she had just went outside, and the little toddler has the glow stick, and the brother tells him why he took it away from him and why he broke it. I had to break it so that you could get the full effect from it. The woman next, next says, I almost ran because I could hear God saying to me, I had to break you to show you why I created you. You had to go through it so that you could, you could fulfill your purpose, the purpose that I had for you. That precious child was happy just swinging his unbroken glow stick around in the air because he didn't understand what it was created to do, which was to glow. A lot of people are content of just being, not being what God has chosen them to be. Whatever it is that's keeping us from glowing, we hold on to because we don't understand what we're chosen to be. Sometimes God has to break things away from us, take things away from us, break things away, away from us so that he can use us the way he created us to be used. He wants us to shine. He wants us to glow. He wants us to be reflection of him. I want you to take your glow stick. I want you to imagine the glow stick is you. What's keeping... <laughs> There's one in every crowd. <laughs> imagine this is you. What's keeping you from glowing? What's keeping you from shining and doing what God has called you to do, what he's chosen you to do? Now I want you to break it. These are cheap, so I don't know how well they'll work.
Are you ready to glow? They're cheap. I said they were cheap. <laughs> but I see a lot of glowing around. I see a lot of smiles on people's faces too. So what is it that God needs to break and take away from you so that you can fulfill your purpose of what he's chosen you to do? A few weeks ago, I asked you to share the light. So this morning, I'm going to ask, how are you sharing the light? We, had, um, we passed out some little cards to help you with that. We asked you to go out into the world and be the light. Do things for other people because Jesus loves you and because Jesus loves them. Well, some of you have been a little bit reluctant to do that. And then I asked you to come back and share those stories and to fill out this little piece of paper. And some of you that's doing it are also reluctant to fill out the pieces of the paper. So this morning, I want to tell you a story from one of those reluctant people. Last week or week before, I had a conversation with this person, and they were all excited about what we were doing, but they also admitted that they were a little scared to do it, a little uncomfortable. They were trying to figure out ways to do it anonymously. Well, evidently God didn't want it done that way. So this person made out a plan, come up with a couple of ideas, got all the stuff needed to carry out the couple of plans, and was still sitting on it. The other morning, she was on her way into town. She's sitting at a stoplight, and she sees a lady across at a bus stop. Now, she's in the turning lane. The lady's over here. But God tells her that's the one of the ones he wants her to use. But she's in the turning lane. So she turns. God didn't let go. And she listened. She turns around. She goes back, parks her car, walks a half a block to the bus stop. Now, when I say somebody at a bus stop, the first thing you think of is somebody that's needy looking, homeless, those things. This was not that type of person. This person was well-dressed, just taking the bus. When she walked up to her, she was reluctant. <laughs> and so when she handed the lady what she had in her hand, the lady was a little standoffish, maybe a little afraid. She goes, I don't know why, but I'm supposed to give you this. And the lady goes, no, 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 I don't need it, Whatever. And she goes, no, God to has told me that I need to give you this, and maybe it's, so don't take this blessing from me. God told me I'm supposed to bless you with this. And the lady was still, I don't know. She goes, well, maybe you're in contact with somebody that I can't be in contact with, and maybe you're supposed to pass it on. But I know I'm supposed to give it to you. And she did. And she left. Now, not a great story. Good story. We don't know what happened after that. At least we don't know what happened on the one side of that. I do know what happened on the other side. As she gets back in her car and starts on her way, her next stop was the grocery store. So she goes in the grocery store, and she's feeling pretty good about herself because she stepped out of her comfort zone and she finally did something. She gets in the grocery store, and she sees this young mother and her son in a lane, in an aisle. And God says, that's the other one. <laughs> well, she's a little bit, she's still a little eerie about it. So she sees a Fry's employee. So she chickens out a little bit, I think. <laughs> so she goes up to the Fry's employee and says, here, can you take it and give this gift card to that lady down there? But wait till I get out of the way. Of course, the fries lady is like, what am I supposed to say? She's a little afraid. Remember, like Aaron was. But she agrees to do it. Now, this was supposed to be a quick in-and-out grocery store stop. So she's going to pick up two or three things, and she had to stop by the pharmacy and pick up something. Well, the two or three things were different parts of the store. 
She gets to the pharmacy, and it takes forever. She finally gets started at the pharmacy, and she goes up to the check, regular checkout line, and she looks behind her in a couple of minutes, and guess who's about two people behind her? The lady that had received the gift card. And she's sitting there watching her and seeing the smile. Remember the fries lady? She comes running up on the other side of her to thank her for letting her be a part of it. She thanked her. She goes, it was the best thing she'd done in life. She goes, it, was, she, she, it brought tears to my eyes. Now, we don't always get to see the effects. God wanted her to see the effects of this one. Not only did she get to see the smile and the glow from the person that received it, but what about that third person? She was as excited as if not the two that was doing the doings. Now, these were not huge gift cards. I think 10 or $15, not life-changing. It's not what was given. It was that it was given. Now, this person came to tell me, and I thought I was going to have to tell her to put a veil on because she was glowing so much about it. <laughs> so this morning, have you had one of those experiences? It doesn't always have to be about money. This is another thing I saw on Facebook this week. It's, he titled it... Uh, proud dad moment. This kind of fits into what I've been wanting us to do. He says that his, him and his teenage sons are riding down the street, and he sees a guy in a wheelchair shoveling his sidewalk. His teenage sons ask his dad to stop. They get out. They help the guy shovel his sidewalk. It costs nothing but a little time. How do you think it made all of those people feel? Made dad proud enough he posted it on Facebook. What about the guy in the wheelchair? What about the two boys? Are you sharing the light? Are you being the light? Well, I asked you to bring those stories back so we could share them and put them out here on our wall, and I want that wall covered with, with light. So I put those pieces of paper on your table this morning. So if you've done something and you've been reluctant to share it, fill that out this morning before you leave and put it on the wall out there. If you haven't done it yet, take a couple of those pieces of paper with you and bring them back next week filled out with something that you've done. I look around the room and I see that there's some people that's done stuff because I can see you smiling. I also see some guilty smiles. I haven't done it yet. Don't be like that reluctant church member that I was telling you about because she's glad she did it now. Next time will be a lot easier. Go light the world. That's what we're called to do. To close out this morning, I want us to look at a couple of scriptures that remind us of that and what we're called to do. Things important for us to remember. Let's start with 1 Peter, verse 2, 9. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You are a chosen people. You're God's special possession. Remember that. Go light your world. Remember what Acts 13, 47 tells us. For this is what the Lord has commanded us to do. I have made you a light that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. You are the light. We're called to spread that light. We're called to spread the light of Jesus, to spread salvation to everyone we come in contact with. Go light the world. We can't forget what Jesus said when he lit our light. No one lights a light and hides it. 
Jesus has lit the light in us. He's not going to hide it, are we? Jesus wants us to share that light. Go light the world. Well, this week, we said goodbye to, our, to the 30, 41st president of the United States as a country, George Herbert Walker Bush. We heard a lot about him this week. We heard about his politics. We heard about his failures. We heard about his successes. But the one thing that struck me was how they kept talking about him, how humble he was as a man, how he truly felt he was called to serve. This morning, I want to remember how he tried to lead us as a country, to be a serving country, to serve one another. I want to share a quote with you from his inaugural address in 1989. We can find meaning and reward by serving someone, some higher purpose than ourselves, a shining purpose, the illumination of a thousand points of light. We all have something to give. He was calling us as a country to serve one another. This isn't a political theology. This is a Christian theology that he was sharing. This was a Christian idea that he was calling us to, to serve one another, to be the light. Today, I'm calling you to go serve to serve each other, to serve our families, to serve our friends. I'm calling you to a higher purpose. Because remember, we're chosen. Remember, we're God's special possession. And Jesus has lit a light in us that we're supposed to shine, that we're supposed to share. So please, go light your world. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for sending the light. We thank you, Jesus, for being the light. We thank you for what you did for us on the cross and how we have the opportunity for you to light our world when we're in our deepest, darkest moments. I ask that you give us courage and wisdom and the ability to step out of our comfort zone and not be real and not be reluctant to share your light that we do it daily and it becomes such a part of us that we do it without even thinking and when people see us radiating and shining we want them to, to want to know why and we want to have the words and the courage to share the light with them so Father God give us strength Make us strong. Make us courageous. It's in your precious son's name we pray this morning. And it's his name we thank you so much. We love you so much. Amen. So Tom shared with us the radiant face of Moses. And um, that radiant light that we're called by God to be. It comes from him. And in this uh, classic Christmas carol, it talks about the radiant beam of uh, God's holy face. And uh, we invite you to uh, stand and sing with us this carol as we uh, prepare for communion and remember our Lord.
a pretty striking scene. Silent and holy night. All is calm and the stars are bright. A young virgin mother with her child, this holy infant so tender and mild. Sleeping in heavenly peace, sleeping in heavenly peace. Like an all-knowing peace, perhaps, that we'll have in eternity. We know and celebrate this birth of our Savior, his life and his ministry, but juxtaposing this scene of peace and hope to the scene of Jesus on the cross, but there still with Jesus was his mother. From John 19, so the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. They crucified him along with two others. The soldiers, they crucified Jesus. At the foot of the cross, stood Jesus' mother, her sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple who he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. The great faith, courage, and obedience required of Mary to accept the call in her life as Jesus' mother, a vessel for God's greater plan. Then as his mother, to have to let him go and surrender him at the foot of the cross, and accept his crucifixion. At communion, we remember our Savior, God's great love for us, to bestow this great gift of hope and joy to each and every one of us, but greater still, the sacrifice made for our pardon so we can surrender all at the cross, like Mary did. However, we know the end. We know that he's resurrected. We know that he rises, and we know we have an eternity with him. It's hard to say what Mary may have been thinking at that moment of the cross, other than having to put her whole faith into her heavenly Father out of love. At this time of communion, the trays are going to be passed. Take a piece of bread representing Jesus' body on the cross and the blood poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. At this time, we remember our Savior. We take account also of what calling that we have on our lives. What do we have the faith and the courage to accept? What is God speaking to us like he bestowed on Mary, this virgin mother, a baby. What is our calling? What are we to embody and to give back to God, surely out of our faith? And where are we called to obedience, to surrender, and to be unyielding like Jesus on the cross and Mary at the foot of it, giving it all to her heavenly Father? At this time of the season and at this time of communion, we remember this gift and this sacrifice. We remember the faith and the love it took of Jesus' mother to let her son go for the fate of all mankind, for each and every one of us in this room. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, at this time of communion, I just pray that we reflect on the great love you have for us, for the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ on that silent, beautiful, holy, peaceful night of hope, God. But juxtaposing that to when he took all of our sin, all of our hopelessness and our fear, and ultimately our death on the cross, solely out of your love for each and every one of us. I pray at this time we remember that, we accept this gift, not just in this season, but in this hour today, God, that we know your love for us, that we trust you, and that we are obedient to you out of this love. We lift up our Savior. At this season, God, at this time of communion, we thank you so much for this precious gift you've given us. It's in his name we remember and we take this communion and we thank you. Amen.
It's fun to watch the servers when I rearrange things and they don't know what to do. <laughs> Keep them on their toes. <laughs> well, we want to know that you were here this morning. Usually I say on the left-hand side of your curtain, but today your black book is in the middle of the table. So we'd just like you to fill that out and let us know that you were here this morning. If you've got a new address or phone number, it's a great time to give that information to us also. Also, we're a church of prayer. In the back of the chairs behind you, I can't say in front of you today, there's our prayer cards. If you've got something that's weighing heavy on your heart, something that you need broken so that God can use you, just fill out that so we can pray for you this week. Or if you've got a praise, put that on there so we can also lift up your praises for you too. At this time, we would like to pray for our offering. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to shine, to be able to take some of the light that you put in our lives through providing for us and let us be able to share that light back to our church so that we can fulfill your goals for this, this church. We ask for wisdom and we ask for guidance and how to use it so that we can shine here in South Scottsdale and be a light for everyone to know that you're here and that they can learn about you here. We thank you for always going before us and providing for us, not only as a church, but as individuals. And it's in your precious son's name we pray. Amen. While they're doing that, we've got a few announcements, a few things coming up. This Wednesday, 6 o'clock, be back here, every one of you. It's a, we're going to have a big old Christmas party. That's why the tables are still like they are. We're going to have our Christmas party. We're going to be doing some Christmas carols, bring appetizers, desserts, desserts, desserts. <laughs> but just bring you, we're going to have party food. We're going to eat. We're going to have fun. We're going to sing some carols. We've got some games we're going to play. We're going to be playing reindeer games. And we're going to play reindeer games. Reindeer games. And also... We're going to have yard sale Santa. So everybody has to bring a gift so we can exchange gifts. Here's the deal. It has to come from your house. You cannot spend any money on it. You have to already own it. Something you would put in the yard sale. It can be serious. It can be a joke. It can be cheap. It can be expensive. It can be an empty water bottle. It can be your big screen TV. And I want that gift. <laughs> but just bring something. We're going to have a lot of fun, and we're just going to have some fellowship and just celebrate the season and celebrate being a church family. Also, go light your world. Take those cards. Go out in our community. Be the light. Be the light this season. It's easier to do it this time of year than it is any other time of the year. So get in the habit of it now so next year you're no longer reluctant and people are no longer looking at you strangely. Well, some of you, but... <laughs> also, Christmas Eve night, we'll end everything up with our Christmas Eve candlelight service. Invite your family, invite your friends, come spend that time with us as we celebrate the true, true meaning of the season, Jesus, the true light. God, have a great week. If anybody needs to talk to me, wants to talk to me about anything, about what it is to be the light, to receive the light, talk to me before you leave this morning. Don't leave this building without talking to me first. If you're new this morning, we are so glad you chose to be here with us this morning. And come back to see us. Y'all have yep. a great week. Thanks, Tom. Please stand with us as we close.
got me shaking All the dead are coming back to life Oh, back to life Hear the song awaken All creation singing We're alive Cause you're alive You call me out of the grave You call me into the light You call my name and then my heart came alive Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love awakens, awakens, awakens Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love awakens, awakens Wednesday, and uh, let's shine our light.